Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Podcast Juice. My name is Michael Dean. Joining me today is a friend of the show, friend of mine, a long time, uh, known this brother online. I actually, actually haven't met him face to face yet, but I do feel like I know him. So none other than Mr. Sean Hicks, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm blessed. Thank you, man, for having me on the show. I've been waiting to get back on this boy since uh, the Tony, Tony, Tony episode. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I just, you yeah. know what's so funny? I just posted that up yeah, on my Facebook man. like it was when a memory thing came up. Uh-huh. So, yeah, man. Well, well welcome back. Welcome back home. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> As you. As we like to say. And uh, Sean uh, has started, I know a lot of listeners are already up on this. Well, he has a, a great uh, Facebook group called the music book and man tell us about that yeah man music book it was a idea from my from my best friend uh boo jay we were supposed to start a uh internet online radio station okay and he was gonna be the dj and i was gonna do the podcasting of it and uh so his idea was to it was three of us uh along with my other boy eric he said, uh, he came, we had a meet and he said, Hey man, we need, let's, let's all get a, get a Facebook group, get some people, get some, uh, get some feedback. And then we can all join them together under, under this roof called rockwitters.com. That was going to be the name of it. And so what was it called uh, again? Rockwitters.com. Rockwitters. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It was going to be dope, man. <laughs> man I got to say, we, we come from that generation, man. We'll, we'll come up with something like, Oh, we're going to do this. And we got to do like, okay, it's going to be like, you know, like you said, rock with the productions or, you know, strictly business. Produ- you know, we always come up with <laughs> a very creative generation. <laughs> but anyway, I, mean, I just say that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, so we did that. We all had our little music groups and my, my, I say my taste is more eclectic than the other two. And, um, man, music book just took off. I wasn't expecting it, man. You know, mm-hmm. it just took off. And out of the three, I had I had some celebs in mind, and and it just became a beast, man. It was I wasn't able to like stop it, and so when it was able, to, when it was time for us to all combine, it was like, dude, I don't know if I can stop this, and I don't know, I can I don't know if I can give you what you need, and so we put it on hold, and then as time went by, and music book just blew up. And got larger and larger, and then became like a community. When people just hit me up in the inbox, like, "Hey man, I appreciate what you do. I love this. Is my favorite group on Facebook." And so I was getting that type of encouragement. Mm. I was like, "Man," so I, I, so I had to go to my boy. It's like, man, I don't know if I, I think you lost me on this one, man. I think I'm gonna have to just sit back and just see what this uh, music book gonna take me. And so that's what it was. All right, and, and what is the music book cover? Uh, cut everything, all genres, and so what I encourage everybody to whatever they whatever they love, and whatever they uh whatever they uh they favorite genres are, but it's heavy R and B. It's heavy R and B. Okay, don't say I, I ain't seen too many punk or country conversations. I no, <laughs> no, right, right. <laughs> hey, hey, man, my partner who does the podcast me uh with me, Jeremiah. What up, though, man? Uh, he uh he always complain, man. He's like, hey man, they just they just in a box. I said, but hey man, people people share what they're exposed to, and so I guess mm-hmm. you can't, you know, in my in my crib, man. We, I'm, man, I listen to Elvis, man. We okay. listen to uh, Rod Stewart, just to everybody, you know. Just my mom was just eclectic, you know. And when I told you I came from Inks, the Inks are just all black, right? And uh, my mom. <laughs> You know, she by her being the, the party person and the uh, extrovert, she uh, she was a she had a white boyfriend, <laughs> and so and go. so it was. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my brother, he, you know, he had an Wait. issue with it and stuff like that, but uh, because of her, you know, just what she liked to do, her influence is her influence is the, like the largest on me. You know, we had the, we always had the up to date stereo. Mm. Uh, you know, she had uh, you talking about crates of L- LPs. My mom had shh, hundreds of LPs, man. Just 
and she just you know, I had the liberty to just go in there, just get whatever. I mean, even the even the uh, Richard Pryor and, and Red yeah, Fox yeah, boys, man, yeah, yeah. was listening to them too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, okay. So, uh, so it's safe to say you personally, you know, I don't know if you like to call yourself this, but you you're a music expert. You know what I'm saying? Like you know a lot about music. You feel it. You live it. You know, I also see that you are um, also heavy, or I see the influence of dance oh, yeah. in, in you as well, you know, uh, which mm-hmm. I love that, man, because it's such a part of the culture of just, you know, R&B, black music. It was always, we had dances. It was always a new dance, or you had to learn a new dance, or, mm-hmm. you know, every year would come with something. So I love that, too. And like you said, now you have the podcast as well. You yeah. started the podcast. And uh, so what kind of stuff have you covered on the podcast so far? Uh, five episodes so far. We, I think the first episode was uh, April 15th. So the first one was the top 10 selling soundtracks of all time. Mm. And then Disco, the fall, the rise and fall of Disco, which is seemed to be people's favorite podcast. Okay. I'm getting a lot of downloads on that one. Then we did. We covered the 90s. We had two episodes of the 90s. Mm, excuse me and then the last one and the last one is uh the prolific hip-hop movies of the 80s which is okay. my favorite podcast okay what what uh let me let me ask you that so what's your favorite two movies or a couple movies from the from that era uh so i covered the four uh wild style mm. b street break in and crush groove mm. and out of the four because i had before i did the podcast I you know I I never seen I never watched the Wild Style so really this was my oh yeah this was my first time oh, watching man. it and I okay. watched it three times okay you know? <laughs> and I, I would say it was out of it was the most fascinating out of out of the four interesting but I would say this man out of the four I would say Wild Style nah man I would say uh, for sure Breaking because Break Breaking <laughs> Breaking man it was so light out of the four it was lighthearted right. It was sunny. The colors were bright. Probably it the just, biggest hit out of out of them, I would imagine. Yes, it was. It was exactly. It was, and um, yeah, and I would say I would say break in and wild style. Wow. Okay. What now? See, to me, I had seen wild style before. I don't know if it was before those other ones, mm-hmm. but it definitely was a big impact because it was at the time. I sort of saw it late. I assume because I saw you know. I didn't see it at the theater, but I saw it on video. Mm-hmm. And it was at the time when we were so enamored with New York hip hop. Like we yeah. wanted to be those characters and we, we copied everything in that wild style movie. We, we became graffiti artists watching oh. that. Like oh. that's, that, that's what we were into at the time. And that movie was like a, like a textbook to how to do it. And like, oh, this is, you know, how to do bombing trains and, and peace books and just all the lingo and stuff. So that that movie, and then we had the soundtrack of that album too. I used to wear that. Out. Oh man, man we used to play. Fantastic it. freaks, man. Yeah. <laughs> the the brothers on the stoop. Uh, yeah. Double trouble, double trouble, double trouble. trouble. Ah man. <laughs> Two. Ah, so you bring me back. <laughs> Hey yeah, man, that was yeah. dope. And when the Fantastic Freaks went through the crowd and went to the stage, yeah, hello man. everybody! <laughs> oh man, yeah, that was when they was harmonizing a little bit in the in the raps and stuff. And uh, uh, yeah, and okay. Busy B and he, when he brought up um, he was the man. Yeah, and when he brought yeah. up the the Atlanta child murders, that was deep too. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah that was an interesting movie. Um, did you ever see? Now I'm just kind of go down that thing for. Have you ever seen Style Wars? Nope. Look up Style Wars. Style Wars is more of a documentary. Okay. It was for us, so for us, it was Style Wars and Beach Street. Style Wars was the real, like, because it wasn't a movie. It was a documentary. But mm-hmm. it played almost like a movie to us. And that one um, is in, just as incredible. That's more of a, break, excuse me, more of a uh, graffiti-based, but, but a great early one, I believe, K-Slay. DJ K. Mm-hmm. Slew passed. He was he's in Star Wars. Okay, okay. Um, but yeah, that's, that's another good one. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So I love those early hip hop movies. Yeah, Breaking is dope. Breaking was incredible. I remember when that came out. That was a big movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ice T in there. Yeah, Ice uh, T. Turbo and Ozone. They were. <laughs> yeah. They was like the Avengers. Like I was like, whoa. 
<laughs> but my man with the with the broom. Oh the man, yeah, that was nuts. Because that was that was one of the things I brought up on the pod was I asked my partner what what scene stood out in each movie. So mm. he said that for him was the hotel hotel scene in the wild style, which is funny. But uh, <laughs> I like the the amphitheater uh, scene, and then break it. B Street was the battle at the Roxy. Yeah, yeah. And a B, and breaking, of course, was the broom. And then uh, I would say Crush Groove. It had a few in that one. You had, man, yeah, well, we cool talking talk about shit, cool, cool J. Yeah, yeah. Even All You Can Eat, that's a standout <laughs> scene, all too. All You Can Eat, good eat. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I love it. All right, man. Okay, okay. Um, well, let's just jump into some conversations, man. I'll throw some things at you, see what we can talk about. All right. So... I want to ask you this. To, you got to pick. See if you can pick between these three. This might be hard. But if you had to choose an album and it was going to be produced by a producer, here's all the three producers you could choose from. Who would you pick? So the first is uh, Jamin Lewis. Mm -hmm. Second would be Teddy Riley. And then lastly, Babyface. Uh. <laughs> Dude, uh, I would say Teddy Riley. Okay, why? Why would you say? Because it, because the uh, the energy, uh, that that new Jack, just that new Jack sound, just it just, you know, it, go, it hits my spirit, man. You know, and you talking about the dance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, his music, his music for the most part made me dance. You know, the other ones were were good, dope for sure. I mean, but ah, uh, if I mean. We, we talking about a singer or just a performer? Because if you go to the performer, I'm going to go with Teddy. It would be just a, he produced an album for whatever artist it would be. But it was like, you had to choose. Oh, in their heyday or now? Well, I'll take in their heyday. Yeah, why would, yeah in their heyday. Okay, well, this. then that's easy baby face. I would say baby face. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, as I think about it, baby face... He would probably be the safe bet in my regards, mm -hmm. because he can write a hit, like for sure. No freaking, I mean, he can write you a, a anthem kind of slow hit, or he can write you a pop, R and B hit. I mean, he, yeah, he could go either way. Uh, but I think personally, I mean, if it was just my choice. Uh, that would be a hard choice between Teddy and Jim Lewis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I probably would lean toward Teddy. <sighs> but oh, man. man, with your Prince influence, come on now. Yeah, but Teddy, man, he... See, to me, I think Teddy's one of the greatest producers because not only does he do New Jack Swing R&B, but he, he did hip-hop stuff that was classic. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like... He covers so many different grounds, and he has slow jams, yeah, as well. But then he has of all of them. I I would his dance stuff is can't even you know I don't know to me like my prerogative stuff with guy Bobby yeah. Bobby stuff uh, Michael Jackson stuff yeah Rex in effect <laughs> yeah I mean and then you know uh, Big Daddy Kane. Um, Kumo D joints, uh, the show, Dougie Fresh. It's like, man, he's got a lot. Hey, man, Kumo D don't get his flowers like he should, man. I mean, I think no, as he doesn't. A lyricist, uh, I go to work, man, yeah, yeah. his flow on that. Mm -hmm. Didn't Teddy, didn't Teddy, uh, produce that song too? I go to work, I think, I go to, I think, yeah, 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 I believe that he did that. Yeah, album. come mm -hmm. on, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a couple songs on there. Uh, no, I think Teddy did go see the doctor. Mm -hmm. I want to say he did the Wild Wild West, but I I don't know for certain. But yeah. I mean, I guess, again, that's what Teddy got so many hits. Like it's crazy. But yeah, Kumo D is, was dope, man. And the thing with Kumo D was the songs that we're mentioning. This was him coming back, like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Kumo D was actually from the Wild Style days. <laughs> yeah, he closed that set out. <laughs> yes, and then coming in 
to the uh, next generation and shutting it down, like going at LL Cool J. What you think that. about that battle? Oh, I loved it. At the time, I thought he got LL for a little bit until LL came out with uh, Break of Dawn and it was, it was over. Yeah, because... <laughs> Hey man, when he dropped those L's on L, it was oh. Yeah, he, I mean, he, wow. yeah, he came hard. I mean, he definitely gave L a run for his money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no doubt. And it was like a person that he was like, oh, Kumo D ain't no joke. Like he can spit, and he, and he was dropping them songs with authority. I was like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Oh. But I think he pushed LL to come back so hard, man. Like when he did, like I said. Mama said, "Knock you out and all that." He yeah. had to come back hard, man. Yeah. yeah. He said, well, "What well, Cool J said?" He said, "He said I'm shadow boxing when I hear you on the radio." <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Well, LL he came at Kumo D, Ice T, and Hammer all in the same song. Like he had a verse for both, all three of them. Hey, why was the fools going to him? Cannabis too. I mean, he ended cannabis. L- remember, LL was the top dog. I mean, for mm-hmm. a long time, LL was the top of the game, man. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you had to go at the big dog. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and some levels he doesn't get the flowers. I think he deserves the person. No, you're right. I mean, right. As, as much as he is meant to this and how big he was, he's not in today's world. They don't even. I don't even mention him in terms of, oh, remember cold rappers? Yeah. I never hear him say LL Cool J. And he was the, I like the kind of cousin friend, but he was the shit, man. Like, LL oh, Cool J yeah. was the top dog. That I remember, man. Like, remember LL Cool J's uh, Unplugged? Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, that was tight. That was tight. Mama said Knock You Out performance was my favorite. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he had the, you know, he had the music for the ladies. Yeah. And then they can get dirty. Like we said, he had these battles. He mm-hmm. was serving them guys, man. Just straight serving them. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was the. He was, you know, it's funny now that you say it like that. He was the prototype for everything that came out. He was built like how you know, 50 Cent was buffed and all mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. LL Cool J was doing that. LL Cool J was also for the ladies. Yep. He had the first love song, rap love song. Mm-hmm. Right? And then he, then he, he even had many different uh, iterations. You know, the original. Then the mama said, "Knock you out." And then, kind of after that, he went into like a pop R and B almost kind of thing. Yeah. He hits for a while there and was really doing his thing. And then, of course, he went into acting and stuff. And yeah, man, Ella Cool J was is incredible. Yeah, yeah. I mean. <sighs> Yeah, that uh, Mr. Smith album, that was a nice album. He brought, he dropped that, and then um, the one with uh, Imagine That, I think that came out in 2003. Man, we talking from like, what, 86 to 2005, maybe? Yeah. Long, long <sighs> what a career, run. what a career, man. <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, all right. Uh, I want to get another one from you from, from groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is for whatever reasons you want it to be. But okay. here's, here's three choices. The Temptations. Mm-hmm. The Jacksons. And New Edition. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Uh, well, I'm, uh, it's going to be between the Jacksons and, uh, and New Edition right off the bat. Mm. Um, oh, man. If I had to say... One of the, uh, if I had a, like one, the other group, I couldn't listen to their, their, uh, their catalog anymore. Dude, I, it would probably, man, that's hard. I, I'm going to say new edition, man. I, I'm new edition. You, you're new going edition. with new edition? I'm going with new edition. Wow. Well, so okay. are, are we talking Jackson five or Jackson? Hey, Just, man. <laughs> I got it, man. I got to be, I got to be specific. See, I can't man. really, I don't separate the two, but I guess okay. you could, I mean. It's the same yeah. group, but it's a different name. Yeah, but you know, you got you take get you take Jermaine out and you put Randy. It, it kind of changed things, man, a little bit. Okay. Uh, uh if the totality of the catalog, yeah, it had to be the Jacksons, man, because just the Triumph, the the Triumph album mm. alone. Yeah, the Triumph album alone. 
So, yeah, yeah. I, I, to me, you can't have the new additions without the Jacksons. Like, it, yeah, new addition to me is uh, is an homage mm-hmm. to early Michael. In my, to, in my opinion, I mean, I, it is, it is. You know, but those guys are. You can't have a lot of things without having new addition, though. You know, after them. Oh, for if, sure. If, if you took them out, then there's not a lot. A lot of stuff would not happen the way that it did. So. Uh, that group is just remarkable, man. Especially how they split it out, mm-hmm. and you got uh, you know, BBD who's supposed to be the weakest link of the mm-hmm. group. Mm-hmm. I mean, like they part of my the famous out of besides Bob, Bobby and and uh, BBD, but man, and Ralph, uh, Johnny Gill, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, super group, man. Like for our generation, they are the. They are the ones, like you know. What I mean, like, yeah, like I said, with you know, before them were the the Jackson Five, the Jacksons, and they sort of built their thing off of that initially. But for our generation, New Edition is that, is that is that, uh, man, it's that origin for a lot of shit. Because, mm-hmm. like you said, from BBD spawns TLCs, yeah, and all of that stuff. You know, from Bobby spawns your ushers chris browns mm-hmm. all of those guys <clears throat> from new edition spawns your jodices drew hill all boys of to that. man boys yeah. to men right like yeah that's that's crazy and they still doing their thing too yeah and and, and you know what's interesting is that for me and I, i'm not speaking for everybody else that's not speaking for you new edition though i really only messed with the any heartbreak album and then i liked the the singles that they had you know the count me out mrs telephone man but i never bought their albums until any heartbreak really yeah i never i had never bought any of their albums i had the singles you know i knew the singles but the rest of the songs i didn't know anything about i knew who the group was but when that any heartbreak came out day one yeah I think that was the same. Yeah, I think any heartbreak and Bobby's album dropped the same day. Matter of fact, and yeah, you know, day one was oh, and it was like who you gonna play first? Which, and that Bobby, you didn't. I didn't think that was gonna be. I was like, oh, okay. I, I remember his first album he had with girlfriend and girl next door and girl yeah. next door with it the cameo, mm-hmm. which I I really liked that song. But I didn't have no idea that he was gonna come the way he did. Like I was like, oh yeah. man, he. As you say, he was a head. I almost a head buster, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, because uh, I remember, because you know, I, I was big. I was the Bobby. I was the biggest Bobby fan because I was I was liking on this girl Angie Thomas, <laughs> and, <laughs> and she was that was her favorite member of the group. Mm. So, in order to get close to her, man, I had to I had to I had to learn about Bobby, man. So, right. And that's what ended up happening. But then I started like, I see why she liked this guy. This dude is, man, he's the man. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember my brother hitting me up. He said, uh, hey, man, you heard Bobby? We were just talking about, we always talk about music. He said, man, you heard Bobby Brown's new song? I'm like, fuck, I ain't heard no song. He was talking about Don't Be Cruel at the time. And uh, sure enough, turned the radio on. It was on. And then I was like, man. And then, then I said, well, maybe a couple of weeks when it was on the radio people started to leak prerogative because mm. i know in detroit it was it got big it was big before it, it was released and i was like man so i couldn't wait for the album to come out and so yeah I, I was heavy into the bobby brown yeah so i would dip back into the new edition but i was more heavier into the bobby brown yeah yeah that album was uh and you know, I didn't know it at the time, but you know the significance of my prerogative. And what was, mm-hmm. there was another song that I actually liked a little bit more. Uh, that was a Teddy song in that album. Uh, was it good to you or something like that? Was mm-hmm. it good yeah. to you? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, man. And then I, at the time, I I had the guy album, but I wasn't listening to it. Really. Uh, yeah, just because I, you know, the, it, at the time when it first came out, it wasn't really, at least here, it wasn't really doing much. And I knew the song, do or groove me, I would hear a little mm-hmm. bit. 
but it wasn't really banging, banging. And then I, it was like after I listened to Bobby, there was another single that came out from God. I don't know if it was Round and Round or something. And I was like, man, let me play this album. I remember seeing the album a lot, but I never listened to it. And I was like, yo, this is the, the sound that's on Bobby's record, but it's even, you know, all of this is like that. And I was like, yo, this album is ridiculous. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And just falling into that Teddy sound, and I was like, "Oh man!" And then just listening, to the, and then the Bobby uh, Babyface stuff on there on oh. Bobby's record. I was, <laughs> I was like, "Wow!" They laced that guy, man. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, oh, the slow cuts, and then you mm-hmm. know, Roni and Rock with you, and then every little step. I mean, yeah, that's, that's yeah, it, was, it. He shut it down, man. It was over. <laughs> Did you see the tour? Did you see the tour? Uh, well, I saw the Any Heartbreak tour, but now that I think about it, I don't think Bobby wasn't, yeah, Bobby nor Ralph, they were both sick or something, so they didn't, they didn't come. Mm. Um, so yeah, I never saw Bobby live. What? In in person. Yeah. I don't think he ever came up here, but I've seen clips and video, I mean, phenomenal, man. Oh, man, I went to, I think I went to about three or four Bobby Brown concerts. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Man. Because people be like, oh, he can't sing, man. But in person and, and the concert, he sound like the radio. I mean, like the record yeah, to me. Yeah. And that's all I ask, you know. And he, man, that song, um, you and I, you and I on the line talked about the Bobby album. And oh, one song that's, it's unsung is um, Loving You Down. Man. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I don't know if you, if you've seen that performance online. Uh, I can't remember say that I did. I can't remember. It was it was a heart. He, he was he was on a heart shaped bed with this woman, the girl, and they just in the sheets doing whatever, you know, just grinding on each other. And then uh, she get on top of him, riding him, and the bed rises above the stage, man. Wow! And she just like going to town on him, <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he just singing his butt off, man. I, oh, that's one of the. I will never forget that performance. I see wow. that. Yeah, about three times. But yeah, he he was hitting that note, man, and she was just thrusting on him. It was funny, but it was a good concert. Yeah. Yeah, man. His second album. Well, that that wasn't his second album. His third album. Third, third. The Bobby album is ridiculous to me. I I I feel like that's so underrated. Like, and I think it came out of the time when he was with Whitney, and it was kind of played like he's kind of the bad guy to Whitney's. And right. I feel like that kind of hurt the the album because it was to me that album blows his "Don't Be Cruel" out the water in my um, opinion. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more um, funkier, yeah, better, better it's, writing. It's one of Teddy's best, uh, and and Babyface's. It was the whole album for the most part was just great to me. I just was like, man, yeah. he really did his thing on that. But I don't think it really did, you know. Uh, it's still five million ain't bad, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just the way it, the way it came off. It was because I I never saw a lot of the videos from that album until way later. Mm. Like there was videos for it, but I had never seen them back in the day. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. yeah. I, I I agree with you because uh, Getaway was a video I always I always yeah. liked, but I could barely find it. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man. yeah that Bobby. That's why it's when I see him now. I, I'm happy for him because you know, n- you know, after hearing, reading his book and watching his movies and stuff and what he's been through. But on one part of me, it's like, man, people don't really. I don't know if people really know that he was really that dude, though. Like, mm-hmm. I know maybe some young young people may look at him now and be like, oh, he's kind of older guy. What's the big deal? But all them people you like today, they ain't hold a candle to Bobby when he was in his prime. Like, no, nah, man. Bobby was a beast with it. <laughs> I mean, he I was, was the dancer, dancer. Yeah. You know I was, what I mean? I was, like, you say, Usher and Chris Brown, that's what he was. Yeah, man. man. I always remember when he was in that movie with uh, Martin Lawrence. <laughs> and it was the scene where they were doing auditions or something. <laughs> yeah. And he was doing his. I, I was. I remember, like, I was like, dude, that dude is a. He can move, man. Like, he is so in sync with music and stuff like he was just yeah he was tight that's that was my influence to do it because i could always dance i was always dancing in private so mike 
Mike influenced me to dance, but Bobby influenced me to show people. Because mm. before I was just, I didn't want to dance like Michael Jackson in front of people. If I go to a club or like that, I mean, because that's the only way, <laughs> right. that was the only dance I really knew how to do. Mm-hmm. And so when, when Bobby got hot, I started watching his videos and then um, checking him out and start, man, man, once I um, learn his moves, I would get my partners together. Um, this is a uh, this is amusement park. It's closed, but it's in Detroit. It's called it was called Bablo Island, and it was a it was a big boat that would take you to the island, and I would say the boat ride would be about two hours long. Hmm. And uh, me and my partners went on the first. They had they had they had uh, boat rides from from Detroit to the island all day long. So we got there on the first boat. And uh, we did our, we did the every little step routine. That was that's the thing we used to do, <laughs> you know. We do that, and so and so then we finished the routine, and all the girls came and like, hey, we we love you, enjoyed it, this and this and that. And then they were saying, um, so what, but what, what boat y'all coming back? So by that time, we was like, all right, we told the girls we gonna take the last boat, which was ten o'clock. So you gotta think nine in the morning to ten o'clock, and this island is small. You can. It may it may have maybe ten rides on it, man. So by the time we got finished all the rides, we were looking at our watches like, man, we still got like eight hours, man. We <laughs> we promised all them girls, so we stuck around and we didn't we didn't disappoint, man, because they were waiting on us, the DJ, everybody, and uh, we tore it down. We did every little step routine, and that was something that we would do randomly, man. We was at record station or whatever. We just, I mean, radio, uh, record store or something like that. We just bust the uh, every little step routine. And, uh, hey, that was good times, man. That was good times. Yeah, man. The the, the dance, it, it, I guess it's always a big deal, but yeah, it was definitely big. And you mentioned Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. And it's easy to, yeah, Michael Jackson was great. He, he was big and all that stuff, but you know, one uh, one of the aspects of Michael was the dance, and yeah, of course we celebrate his, his dancing. But the effect of his dancing on the youth absolutely was huge. Like you said, you 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 learned those moves, and whether or not you showed them off in public, you knew that there were some cats who took it real serious and really studied Michael's movements. And his dancing and his footwork and the body positioning and you know for me man the what was it the thriller making home making of home video whatever that thing mm-hmm. used to watch that over and over when Mike was with the dancing in the studio they was practicing and I was like oh man this cat man trying to do all them moves that was a that was a rite of passage for some cats. At least it was for me, like, because I could go to school and I knew there was a couple of Mike disciples there and it was all (laughs) judged by, you know, yeah, you could do the moonwalk stuff because you do some of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It was like, it was almost like an unspoken competition. You're kind of like getting down like, oh, okay, oh, yeah, okay, you got that one. Oh, okay. (laughs) Did you have some of the gear? Man, listen. <laughs> I had the Jerry Curl, uh-huh. the beaded jacket, the lo- the, the, the penny loafers, <laughs> the wa- high water pant. Man, no, you couldn't tell me nothing. <laughs> I tried to imitate the yellow, the yellow outfit, you know, the yellow vest. I, tried to- <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly hey, what you're talking about. Oh, dude, wow. I had that man. That was bold. Oh, yeah. That was bold. Oh. You had the white pants and stuff too. <laughs> I didn't go that route, but uh, I did have the jeans. But I had the yellow sweater, okay, and the, and the penny loafers. Man, I used to wear that to school, and I had the beaded jacket as well. Now, did, now, did you have any like? Cause I had the, it was anything, but it was some sort of Mickey Mouse shirt or sweatshirt. You know, Mike used to wear the, the Mickey Mouse joint with the collar. Uh, of and, course, man. <laughs> I had a Mickey Mouse watch, man. <laughs> Hey, that man had the gold face too, man. Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, hey, man, check this out. Not only did I have a, not only did I have a Mickey Mouse watch, <laughs> I had a pet rat, bro. Lord, <laughs> damn. Okay, <laughs> you win. 
You win. <laughs> you had Ben. Right, and she, he said, I yeah, yeah. His name was Harry, <laughs> man. His name was Harry. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first. I, <laughs> you serious. Uh, you serious. Yeah, I was. I was. Yeah, man. But Michael Jackson was. Shh. Wasn't nothing like that. Not to that level, man. He was. Did he you was follow him man. all the way? Because I, I, the 90s, man, is just. Uh, you know, I probably jumped off when I was paying attention to the albums. Would have been right before with his story. Yeah. That I kind of was like, ah, this isn't. It's not to the caliber. Of, Mike sets such a high bar with his work yeah. that I just didn't feel like it was. I mean, it was good songs every once in a while, but in terms of like mm -hmm. when you just get the whole album, you just let it play. I, I had kind of stopped. I had jumped off a little bit. <clears throat> at that point um but i appreciate it like you know butterflies it's a banger yeah uh what's that one he had a rock your world mm -hmm. that, that was great like i said he had he was always gonna have some classic michael songs but it just wasn't the same unfortunately um yeah but i was a fan from the jackson days yeah. You know, I was really into the Destiny album, uh, Triumph. Uh, those albums are phenomenal to me. And then, yeah. of course, Off the Wall, Thriller. What about that live album, man, that Jackson had? Um, I wasn't as into it. Not that it wasn't good to me. I just didn't have access to it. But I have heard, okay. I mean, I definitely know it a little, a little bit. Um, but I know that yeah. people swear by that. Oh, yeah, word yeah. out. Absolutely. Absolutely. My mom just didn't buy it back then, so I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't able to be just buying records. <laughs> yeah, right, right. At that point, so if my mom's dad didn't have it. I wasn't gonna hear it. But, yeah, man. Um, all right. So uh, Prince. Yeah. I suspect that's how we may have sort of. Yep. Met initially through that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Prince is a big deal. Now, uh, to start off the Prince conversation. Um, have you heard? Or listen to the new Prince and the Revolution Syracuse. I would, matter of fact, before we before I dropped on this mic, I was that's what I was listening to. I had it in what the you, uh, surround sound. Oh, okay. So what do you what do you think of it? Oh man, I you know. I love I love that uh concert. Only you know, I will say this though that the God part I don't listen to that man. But uh, well, well, why not? I it not 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 anything about because it's spiritual or anything like that. It just when. It, when I first saw it, I saw it. I remember seeing it on VHS. Uh, mm -hmm. That part when he was talking to him, he was down, 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 down on, on, the, on the piano. <laughs> yes. I, I, it, it, he lost me on that. He lost me on that. So <laughs> I just couldn't get down with that, man. I yeah. said he was Prince being Prince, but... Um, you know, real, if we could stay on that for just a second, because I listened to this whole thing last night, and when I got to that part, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. And I kind of remember, like... I was like, wow, he was on some other stuff. Like, he was going in some other direction that I could see later sort of coming back. But when I listen to it now, and I wasn't watching it a video, I was just listening to it. Mm -hmm. And as I was listening to it, I was like, you know, on one hand, as I never thought about this bef way before, to me, that was a very on, uh, how would I say, ominous or almost scary sort of thing that he was doing and i almost yeah. i felt like it was like he was speaking as if and i'm just sort of giving my opinion it's not fact speaking like he was his dad or was some some adult or angry person what you looking at yeah you know yeah. talking to a kid or something mm -hmm. and like and and when you hear the fans reactions as it's doing it and when you when i saw it when i was watching it I, I always played it because I thought it was a sexual thing that he was sort of playing with, but because I was going by his look and how the fans were taking it. But when I'm listening to it and the tone of voice and then the type of music that he's playing, I was like, I don't think this is actually funny or sexual at all, really. I felt like it was, he was, and I don't know what he's drawing from, but I was like, he's talking as if it was some older person chastising a, 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 somebody else like well, what are you looking at 
Like I'll yeah. beat your ass too. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like the older oh. some of our olders would get. And I was like, that was I was like, man, this is kind of this was actually kind of dark. I don't know if people were really picking up on and it sounded like you maybe you did pick it up on that, but I it's did. very interesting. It's odd actually. He might as well just come out there and start speaking in tongue, man. Because <laughs> I was, I was listening to what you was listening to. I was looking at the crowd and and seeing their response. I couldn't imagine going to going to a Prince concert in that because you know, it, Purple Rain was just was on everybody's mind yeah. and hearts. And then he break into that. It was kind of off putting, man. Yeah, I, well, I will say I in twenty twenty two that I am now. I liked it because I was like, man, this guy was actually deep. Whether or not it makes you comfortable or not, but I was like, he didn't have to do this. He could have just right. been in celebratory mode. But yeah. I was listening to him, I was like, man, this is very interesting. What is he trying to convey here? <laughs> and then, you know, he's God, God. You know, I was like, wow. You don't hear pop stars at the height of their thing would deviate and go into something like that. Right. That's why right. I was just like, that's very interesting. But I, but, yeah, that's interesting that you brought that up. But go ahead. But yeah, it wasn't. Um, I actually, actually I didn't know it was released until I, I saw you. I saw you and yeah. Big Sexy talk about it, and I was like, "Man, let me let me go check and see if it." So I went to Apple Music, and it was there. And so I just started listening to it today. Okay. But I've had, you know, I got the, you know, I got the, I got the VHS somewhere. But yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, they. I will say. It. Uh, the mix on this, for after hearing this thousands of times over the years, it's a whole different listening experience. Uh, and Brown Mark, oh, I did, I just, did catch up on that. Whew. What are you, you could listening really hear, on? I'm actually just li I'm listening to my headphones and my uh, playing it off my phone. I'm streaming it from Google Music. Okay. Uh, okay, it was phenomenal. Like the only thing that the only issue I have with it, it's a small issue. But some of the songs, and I think Computer Blue is one that stood out to me, and I think Baby I'm a Star suffers from this as well. Because of the new mix, some of the, I don't know if it's some of the synth parts mm -hmm. that make up the sort of cornerstone of some of these songs, seems like it's almost missing. Uh, yeah. And so they sound like different takes of these songs but i was like on computer blue there's certain chords or things that they're just in a different position in the mix where the bass playing and the guitar and the drums are the more in your face and you don't really hear the chords that make up computer blue that we know in terms right. of some of the, and i was like i was i was like is this my headphones doing this but then i was like no nah, this is on a couple of songs and I was like, this is the only thing that I kind of side eye about it. But again, I have to realize that this is a different mix than the one we're used to. Right. And then I think I was doing some reading or something and they were like, not everybody that's playing has their own track either. It's separate. Some of these instruments are sort of grouped together okay. on right. tracks. And that may, may be why I think some of the keyboard stuff may be different than the two channel mix that we're used to hearing you know on the the classic one but aside from that the guitar the guitar playing with windy you can hear mm -mm. and very clearly now and stuff that band is fun i mean revolution's always been badass but right. man they are ridiculous Brown Mark is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> like he he stands out. I can hear. Yeah. His, I can hear that. I can hear his. I can hear the bass. Stuff like uh, possessed, and that whole sequence, irresistible bitch. That's a whole other thing. Like that groove is so ridiculous. I'm like, they're doing this live. <laughs> this is, hey, can uh, I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, who who plays the drums on the original version of that? Irresistible. Is that I Morris? Think or that that's, I think it's either Morris. I think it's Morris. Or it could be Prince, but it's definitely it sound I was listening to it last night as well. And I was like, this is this sound like a time song. Like I, like this was a time recording during that same period, but Prince just took it for herself or something. Mm. Uh, is it, yeah, it I, love this. I love exactly. it. I love the drum. I love the drums yeah. on there, man. I was listening to that track, the actual track. It's interesting. You can hear Prince saying 
something to whoever Morris or something like when the beat starts, he says something, but then they put this effect on it. So you can't really make out what he's saying, mm -hmm. but you can hear him sort of giving direction like, all right, go, and go this or something like always fascinating when you hear, hear them doing stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's a Syracuse purple rain uh, as much as it's played out that's so that's some that's a hair buster listen yeah, it is. <laughs> he was and, bad man yeah um at all the concerts that you may have audio of it, what what performance that you know that uh when he did when doves cried that it sound closest to the record because every time i hear it does it you know it, just, yeah. it sounds different i mean i'm sure you can't recreate the studio version but what's the closest to you in your opinion well, I would say my favorites are either going to be from the Syracuse or was that birthday show from like 83 at First Avenue, I think it was. Okay, okay. But one of those two, that's, that's my favorite versions of When Doves Cry. What about yourself? Uh, it, I mean, I, I, I was try, I've been trying to find out. I've been trying to find a version that's close to the record. I haven't had, had mm -hmm. that yet. I know. That drum is just hard to recreate. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I guess that's the Syracuse, man. You listen, to, I forgot about that. Well, here's the thing. The Syracuse show is how I fell in love with live Prince. Because mm -hmm. that was the first time I really got to, I mean, I went to the concert when he came here locally, but then to see it on that VHS, to really sit down and examine it and listen to it, that's how I fell in love with the live Prince. And I have not heard it in a while. So listening to it again last night in this newer mix, that When Doves Cry, doesn't they kind of do an extended? Din -din 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 -din. Mm -hmm. That sounds so nice now. <laughs> like I was, I was oh, like, God, this is really funky. Like this sound, It didn't sound like this all these years. Because you can hear Brown Mark and all of that so crystal clear now. And it's bumping, man. Like, ah. And even... Uh, Baby, I'm a star. Mm -hmm. When they do that breakdown, that long, I didn't ever pick up on this before, and I maybe I did and totally forgot. That is uh, essentially uh, it's going to be a beautiful night. Mm. That whole little segment, really. I was like, if you listen to it, it's this. You can see how that morphed into a beautiful night because you can almost, you know, it's this. The drums are very similar to bass line, but they just yeah. put a song over it. It was yeah. like an extended jam. I was like, I was like, man, this was the revolution. And you can hear like the Eddie M and Eric Lee starting to really come through in that stuff. And revolution was nasty. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Is that your favorite favorite band of his? <sighs> It, it, depending on the day, it's either the Cyan Times band or, or the or the Parade <laughs> Revolution. Because <laughs> they was nasty. At that. Oh man, oh, I can't wait for the reissue of that. Oh man, Parade and the Love Sexy man. Yeah, yeah, both of them. Yeah, and the thing with the Purple Rain. Well, uh, the the later revolution is, is, was interesting to me is Prince isn't really playing that much. Yeah, that's how cold that band is. Like they sound like that. He ain't playing really. He'll jump on and maybe you know do a solo on the organ or, but he wasn't playing guitar heavy. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't actually. Mm -hmm. being, he was just dancing and directing the band. So that band was was incredible, man. Like they yeah, was so. jamming. <laughs> And then plus when you add that Sheila, listen to that baby I'm a star. When you get to that and you can really hear Sheila and all them with that percussion, that stuff is nice. Woo. And what can I find a high resolution the high resolution boy? Uh you have to ask Mark on that. I don't I don't okay. fool with that okay. stuff. Okay. Um I'm not I'm not up on that, but yeah, he loves that, that stuff. I ain't got no problem with the <laughs> The regular stream. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, my phone has Dolby Atmos on it, so that adds another layer of shine to it. Yeah, you know, I'll get yeah. you some nice headphones and just gig out, man. But yeah, I guess I'm but, gonna do that. But um, all right. So speaking of Prince, also, um, 
and I, I might do this as a, as a video later, but I'm going to get your opinion. If you were talking with a newbie or a, a younger person that was just going to get into Prince or anybody that was going to get into Prince, maybe mm-hmm. they've heard some of the hits, but they're like, man, they, they're asking you, which album, which album should I start with? What, what are four albums you would give them? Four. Dirty Mind, 1999, Purple Rain, and Sign of the Times. Hmm. Yeah. So this is all the eighties joints. Yeah, you know that that from seventy eight to I would say seventy eight to eighty nine. That's 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 all me right there. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Dirty Mind, nineteen ninety nine, uh, Sign of Times. Did you say what? Purple In Rain. Purple Rain. Purple yep. Rain. Okay. Mm-hmm. What, yeah, you can't escape that one. Which one should they start with? Me, I would say 1999. What, what I love that? that album because it's it's funk, and you could just the transition from you could you could hear the transition. He was getting more mature, uh, and just that uh, just the, your musicianship. And then to me, that I like that I like that version of uh, the Revolution. Mm. It's just a song, and this that song that that time era. I have so many memories, man. My brother playing basketball, and um, at the school, at the high school, they would come out on Prince, the, the <laughs> basketball team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Let's work, uh, dance, music, sex, romance. They would play that. So yeah, it just really t- it just takes me back to that, and I just think a lot of those songs, um, "International Lover," uh, you know. Uh, Let's be telling me, Mary, uh, Lady Cab Driver, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, man, Lady Cab it. Driver. I just, I, because matter of fact, the reason I say that, because those, those are the albums I had my kids listen to. And I was like, here mm. you go. Here, go to school, go to class, you know. <laughs> and and they, they, uh, they thank me for it too. Yep. Yeah, Lady Cab Driver. That's, man. <laughs> <laughs> if that could have been a single or something, I mean, that's just one of those songs that they don't need to be nothing. It's just gonna be dope. It's gonna be the people's chant regardless. Like, yeah, he did his thing on that one. Oof. And then the end part, man, this is the speaker part. I love all yeah, of that, man. Yeah. <laughs> Grace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, he was on his stuff back then. I would say, <clears throat> I would give this is the I would give people these two albums. If they were just getting into Prince, and I'm saying this is something, this is the people that have heard, you know, "When Does Cry" and all these big, big songs. Purple Rain. I would give them "Purple Rain" the album because that's what, you, yeah. I don't care what nobody says. That's a dope, dope album. One of his best. One of his best albums. Yep. And I would give them the Rainbow Children. <laughs> Woo! And, and, and I would say. What are you trying to do, man? If you can love Purple Rain, which I don't know how you could not, and then if you can get your mind right to listen to the Rainbow Children, anything else by Prince, you'll get it. But to me, there's such an extreme. And to me, the Rainbow Children, in my opinion, is one of his best albums of all time. It's not his easiest for some people, but musicianship quality, the way it was recorded, the fact that it's a concept album, that's Prince to me. The the weirdness of it, the what he's talking about, it could be over your head or you don't want to hear about it, but that is the extreme example of, of, of Prince. Like he goes against all conviction or convictions or goes against all just normal stuff. And gonna give you his take on something, and the Rainbow Children does that brilliantly to me. Man, you picked the polarizing album. Yeah, but I, I, I feel like that's like a a, a line in the sand. Like mm-hmm. the same way when it came out, some people was like, "What the hell is this?" But to me, that's how the Great Prince albums were. Like you always like, "Man, what is this? this? Isn't what I expected?" Like, what the hell is this? you know? I remember when Love Sexy came out, I was like, "What the hell is this, man?" Like. But then over time, I was like, wow. Yeah. 
This is incredible. <laughs> you know? Um, I, you and I had a conversation online, I don't remember, but it was, it was about the Love Sexy album. And I, uh, I had the tape, which is one thing, but when it, when it, when it came on the CD, it was just one track and it was hard for me to listen to it, man. I didn't like mm. the, you know, cause it, to me at that time I had, it was skippable tracks mm. right now. I can listen to the whole thing, but, but now it's they, the, uh, they got the tracks divided. So, uh, when they did that, man, I've just been going heavy into it. I don't know why, man. I don't know why I didn't do it before, but now, <laughs> now it's, the tracks are divided. I tend to listen to it more than it did when it was just one track. Interesting. You yeah. didn't care though, huh? Yeah, I think. Well, it takes away your choice. The other way, you just you have to. You're forced to listen to it this one way only. You know? Yeah. And that could probably be like people are like yeah, and you know yeah, that album. At the time it came out, well, yeah, I didn't you know what to make of it to some degree. Of mm -hmm. course, it had Alphabet Street was a, a no question hit. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, this is Prince. We talk this now. This is the shit, you know. And then some of the other stuff, he was like scratchy, like, huh? <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> yeah, you know, like what is what is he doing? I, I, okay, going a different direction. But then when you give it time, yeah. I think when you see that concert, oh, I didn't go. Man. That's when I was like, okay, let me go back and listen. Now I can hear these songs, right? I get what he's doing now. And I was ready to receive it and everything. But yeah, you know. But uh, And then, of course, the cover didn't. <laughs> made things a little complicated. <laughs> Just like the, the second album. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> he was on the Pegasus. Right, like, <laughs> made things a little complicated. <laughs> All right, so, what's your favorite concert of his? That just in general, or that I've seen, or that you've seen? Uh, my favorite would have to be actually my favorite would be the uh, One Night Alone, mm. Rainbow Children, only because it was a smaller venue. And we got to see the um, uh, sound check, and just and we were up front mm -hmm. for the show, and just really seeing it like in your face. Uh, that was probably my favorite uh, experience. How about yourself? I only went. I was only able to go to three. I went to the Emancipation Boy, mm. and I saw music musicology twice let me tell you a story about that so uh, <laughs> i i could talk about this because i hollered at my boy who went with me he said the statue of limitations are up <laughs> so 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 we went the i think prince was in detroit for three for three shows and i saw the first and the last and the first one we went with our girlfriends you know people you know women we was living with and the second one we went we took other ones right <laughs> so Oh man, check this out, Dean. Hey man, so <laughs> I just caught what you just said right there. Yeah, was, yeah. Right? <laughs> I was waiting for a response. So, wow. uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so we get to our, we walk through the crowd, and mind you, the per oh, this is I could talk about this because that's not me anymore. <laughs> but the person I went with was married, man, and um, Lord. I know, man. I went. I went Ooh. against my rule. That was the first time. <laughs> that was my rule. Never ever date somebody married. But uh, I broke. I broke that rule because, yeah, you know. Just anyway, hey, right? yeah, that's crazy. true. <laughs> 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 so, I broke the rule, and so because she was married, I was not gonna hold her hand, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna do that. And so we walking through the crowd. She had a little attitude because I wouldn't hold her hand. I said, you know, I hold it when we get to the seats. You know, <laughs> come on, Grace. <laughs> no check, man. Oh, Dean, this is like one of the worst experiences I had. So we sit down. Prince come on. He did one song. He did the second song. So the girl I was with, she was like, I'm about to go get her something to drink. So I was like, oh yeah. So I let my boy his date. Hey y'all, what y'all want? Tell her what we want. She leaves, man. Do you know she never came back? Wow. 
I'm hey, she hey. She dipped. <laughs> dipped on me. And we talking like an hour drive from where we from where I picked her up to to the palace of Arbor Hills is an hour drive. I'm looking back, so I couldn't enjoy she, the concert. Did she drive you guys? There? I mean, who was no? The she, I drove her, so I had a, you know I felt like a level of responsibility. Like I want to make right. sure she can get home safe, or at least back to wherever. And man, I kept looking back. She wouldn't come back. I was so by the time wow. about a half hour passed, I'm like, oh, she's not coming back. I'm hitting her up. She's not answering. Mm. And I just could so the rest of the concert, which was dope, I couldn't get into it because right. of what just happened, man. So see, finally, if you was a low down, dirty cat, you wouldn't have cared nothing about it. Hey, Prince, I but because you was a good brother, yeah. He was like, ah, damn. Uh, ah, <laughs> so yeah, get back, hit her up. She said, yeah, I had my girl pick me up. You disrespected, disrespected oh, you because I hold your hand. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's the first time I ever said that out loud, bro. Mm, mm, mm. But yeah. <laughs> Life is a player. Oh, wow. You disrespected me. I had my girl. I know that. She's, yeah, the sisters ain't playing us. that. Damn. She left a Prince concert. A Prince concert. $100? Them tickets man. ain't cheap. Yeah. Man, $120 a piece. At that, and, and What'd your boy say? Yeah, he was shaking his head, you know. <laughs> his date was like going in on my date. You oh, really? Do better, yeah, you can do better than that anyway. And so, wow. Yeah, that was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the musicology tour, man. Interesting. Was, okay. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, uh, shoot, as we are talking about this, they are wrapping up the uh, celebration over yeah. at Paisley Park. Uh, this, or saw a couple of recaps of some of the events that happened. It sounded like it was a pretty good time over there. Have you ever been to Paisley Park? No, I haven't. I haven't oh. yet. Mm, gotta make it, man. Gotta make yeah. it, too. You gotta check it out, man, for sure. You would, uh, you would really appreciate it, too. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, the people that I know personally uh, said the same thing. They come back, hit me up. You gotta go, you gotta go. But yeah, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it for sure. All right, so um, man, with that said, what are you listening to these days? Ah, man, nothing new, just old stuff, just whatever, man. Just yeah, what 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 are you listening to? What no matter what age it is. Uh, let me see, man. Just <laughs> I got so many uh playlists. Let's <laughs> see, yeah, I'm all. Hey, so yeah, I like I said, I told you I, I had a beautiful day yesterday and um my friend that's out of town he came in in town he came for a funeral but we hooked up and um his name boo j and then my girl sasha we we called ourselves three's company we was three's company and um they said meet us at the park and bring your speaker not 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 they didn't even know that i already had the speaker in my car and so i got there just printed out man just listen to prince so yeah i would say that um, Prince all day, Bruno Mars for sure, man. Mm. You know, um, yeah, Bruno Mars, Silk Sonic. What do you think about that album? I love that album, man. That's refreshing. It's you know, it's it's that's one of the reasons for the group to keep the classics current, and mm. that that album has a classic vibe to it. And it's just yeah, I love Anderson Park, and I'm I'm a huge Bruno Bruno fan, and I appreciate. Him pay homage to the, you know, to the legends and stuff. Were, were you a fan of his before the Twenty Four Karat album? Oh yeah, yeah, from oh, okay. day one. Oh really? I didn't okay. like that one. What's that song? The, that song that he said he had killed himself for that girl. Whatever that song, I didn't like that. But uh, he said, "I die for you." Oh right, right. Yeah. yeah, that song. I didn't, I didn't like the lyrics to that. But everything after that, boom, been a fan since. Okay. Yep. Have you ever seen yep. him live? Nah, man. I'm t- man, how much those tickets cost? Oh, yeah. Man, yeah, I ain't joke. about to pay no two hundred dollars. <laughs> see, no, see no dude, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm straight, man. Hilarious. I ain't about to pay no no dude, man. Nah, man. I'm wow. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get you though. Yeah, uh, my my daughter seen him a few times, and then oh, really? when she 
she loves it, and then she okay. complains about how much she paid. I'm like, of course. Yeah, I, but, closest I've gotten, I was in Vegas a couple of weeks ago. I was at the MGM where they were playing, but I didn't have a ticket to go inside. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was outside, yeah, because it was expensive. <clears throat> but I do want to see them, though. I definitely want to see them. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah them, them, dudes, them dudes is dope. I, I give it to them. I can see why some people are, I don't dare say put off by it. Hmm. Huh. Um, and I can understand a little bit. Which part? Well, I think I think there's a level to the Silk Sonic specifically that could come off as if it's like, I don't know if buffoonery is the right word, but it's almost like playing with it. Like, I think the way they present themselves with the clothes and stuff, I don't necessarily feel that that's authentic, but I know right. they're doing it with such love mm -hmm. and they don't mean harm by it. Right. But I could see how that kind of, it kind of comes off as a, uh, again, mockery may not be the right word, but it's just not totally authentic. I think the music is super authentic and the singing and everything, but I could see how some of the performance feels like they're playing. I feel yeah. like that's costumes that they have on. Oh, the wigs kind of, and all that. Yeah, yeah. and I can so I can understand on that level, but I mean, there's no denying. I think like, you know, the music is done with such care and love, uh, and they they feel it. I, you know what I mean? Like that's why I say if I saw it live, I'd probably be like, man, these dudes are the. I'd be over the moon about it. Um, and I'm speaking more so on Bruno's stuff as opposed to Anderson. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Bruno is dope. He is. Personally, like, I think he's super talented. The only thing I, I say this about Bruno, I want to hear, I can't wait to hear his, his, like, sign of the times or his, like, where he's not necessarily trying to have hit song, pop songs. He's just yeah. doing the shit that, he want to do. He want to do, and, and I'm sure he's doing what he wants to do now. But he still makes these songs meticulously, like they're gonna be hits. <laughs> uh, right. You know what I mean? But I would love to hear, like, what is Bruno's real style in terms of, like, if he wasn't trying to do this style or that style, and he was just doing the Bruno thing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what's the Bruno sound. I don't know if we've been able to figure that out yet. You know, I think that it seemed like that first album was him, though. See, I never heard his. I didn't listen to his first stuff, so you could probably be right. Yeah, it's yeah. I think that first one was definitely him. Okay. Uh, let me see some of the songs on there. Yeah, yeah I just heard bits and pieces. Uh, just the way you are. That's I've, I've yeah, heard I think that. That was a big hit. Mm. Uh, Runaway Baby. I guess that has a. Um, you could also know that he's uh, influenced by Elvis. So I think Runaway Baby yeah. got some of that rockabilly to it. Okay. Um, yeah. And maybe that maybe. is his style. He, he's so, you know, he's such a fan of music and, and a student of it that he, uh, all of that stuff, his influences are a part of his style. In the same way, I would, I guess I could see like a D'Angelo, like. Yeah. You, sometimes you can hear all of his influences in his stuff. Like he's just so such a a fan of music that how could it not? I, you could say the same thing about Prince. Mm -hmm. You can hear a lot of the influence in his stuff. You can see the influences in him, uh, but he puts he's done it so long where he sort of put his own sort of take on it. Yeah. And then if you didn't know who those influences were, you just think it was just him. Like oh. That's, so I guess they all kind of do that thing where they're influenced by something. Yeah, yeah. That that song I was talking about, uh, it was called Grenade. Uh, okay, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah, Grenade. That's a big yeah. hit. Yeah, he had monster hits. Big, big hits. Um, yeah, that song he did with Bob was another song that I liked too. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, uh, what is that? How's that song go? Da, 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 da. Something about you. Is that that one? Yeah, 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 yeah that one. Yeah. What happened to that dude? I know you start talking about flat Earth and you <laughs> get the hell up out of you. <laughs> he um, hey, he um, 
last time I saw him, I saw him in person. He he opened up for the Eminem Jay Z tour. Really? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. When they did okay. the home and home, the home and home tour. Okay. Yeah, he opened up and uh, dude <laughs> Dude had uh he put a guitar out on this man. I was like, whoa, mm. what's up with that? You know? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Man, what was um you know so I wanted to ask you this. You could be the person to talk about this. What are some of the who are who are some of the like unsung artists that you love from the nineties that you know, they probably had a couple of hits, but we didn't hear hear too much from them. Yeah. You know, I went to, I remember that group, UNV? Something's going on. I remember the, the title of the group for sure. I don't remember yeah, the song. he, uh, the lead of the group, uh, J- John Powell, I went to church with him. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it, it was, it, he was incredible because he's a, he's a songwriter. We would go to church, I'd see him on a Sunday, and he was like, I'm about to go home and get in the studio. He'd come back next Sunday with an album. <laughs> 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 yeah, he would uh, you know, but yeah, this UNV, uh, let's see who else we got. Man, but <sighs> Tony 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 though, man. Mm. Those dudes there. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you seen them live? I saw them, yeah, the second album. Okay. A tour when they came to Seattle. I, I vaguely remember it, but I know I went and at the time, I was just amazed at the stage setup. It was, it reminded me of like Sign of the Times or something. I was like, wow, these guys are big. <laughs> and it was dope. I've what seen, about... I've seen Sadiq a few times, you know, his solo Oh, stuff. really? Yeah, I'm a f- okay. big fan of his, yeah. I mean, Black Street, though, Black Street, mm. they had some good yes. songs, yes. slow songs, too. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, me another, and my boy. Another level ahead. album? Think yeah, that yeah. one, and um, the one before that one, the one with uh, Joy on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you remember what about BNGB, man? <laughs> 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 that little crew, MC Hammer, the Hammer stuff, yeah, man. The first hip hop showman. Yeah, yeah, Hammer did it uh, big, man. I almost feel like they were too early. Yeah, you yeah. know, like they. He, I mean, he did his thing. But I don't think the game, the marketplace of hip hop was just figuring it out with him as mm-hmm. opposed to if he would have came a little later when all of the things were in place. Because he was kind of the first one doing a lot of stuff, doing the ad, you know, uh, marketing things and the yep. stuff for movies. I mean, he was kind of just doing it as the first time doing it. But imagine if he would have came after that was already set up. Like if he would have came... In the late '90s, mm-hmm. early 2000s, Hammer would have been even bigger. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, he was big, but he would have probably like really uh, been huge. Um, but a lot of those cats came early. Big Daddy Kane was too early. He was too. Yeah. You know. Um, but I don't want to get sidetracked to what we were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> high five. What about high five? High five. Yes. I love them. Yeah, uh, rest in peace, Tony Thompson. He was that was my guy. He went when he went solo. His album mm-hmm. was dope. He had a uh, he had uh, Mary J. Produce. Uh, oh really? Puffy, uh, Devante. He Devante Swain did some. This album come out. This was ninety six. I have to check yeah. that out because I never. Heard oh that. yeah, man, you, you okay. should check that out. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Of course, we can't forget about Mary J. The Queen. Mm-hmm. I used to not really be up on. I, I loved uh, my. I was a big fan of Real Love. I used to mm-hmm. bump that, but after that, I, I never. I thought it was. Uh, I thought they was cheating because <laughs> it was sample. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. like oh, I don't want to listen to this. this is, until later, when I was like, man, I'm missing it. Mary J is the shit. <laughs> Y'all, shoot, I got I got two pulses of her on my wall. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she oh, is yeah. incredible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mint condition. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're dope, man. Stokely. Man, where the, where where the black bands at, man? Oh, see. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> 
gotta have a man. I'm gonna do. We we gonna do a pod on that too. Oh, okay, like, please man, do. We gonna do a yeah, definitely. Uh, SWV Coco. Okay, yep. She mm-hmm. did she ever have a solo album? Yeah, I had. It was okay. I think. Uh, okay. who was, uh, I think Dark Child did some cuts on there. Okay. She's one that should have should have been way bigger. For sure. You know? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even be mad if she had an album now and they finally, like, recognized her just specifically. Like, her voice is one of the voices, man. Like, it's incredible. Yeah, it's distinctive, too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Tevin Campbell. Yes. Yep. The next mic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I roll him hard, man. It's pause, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, soul to soul. Yes, they were really big at a certain point for, mm-hmm. for a minute. Yeah. They had that hit. They, was, they rolled it to the wheels fall off from that, that one hit. Yeah. So it kind of had the, the second one kind of sound like, so, okay, yeah. What about your girl, Lauren Hill? Oh, man. Hell Boogie. Yeah, man. Damn. Excellent. 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 You, you've seen her in person? Um, in concert? No. no. No, wait. No, I have. One of the worst concerts I've ever seen in my life. How about to say, was she on time? <laughs> man, you know, she was. Her attitude was so nasty that just me as a fan in the audience, I was embarrassed. Oh, that ain't cool. Yeah, it was. I think it was her and the roots. They came to Seattle. It was an outdoor thing. And she was horrible, man. I hated it. I mean, I was such... I mean, I'm still in a big fan. Mm-hmm. But the songs didn't sound like the record. She just had a nasty attitude. And it was... I was literally falling asleep. Yeah. I've never done that in a concert before. I was just like... This was such, wow. It was such a disappointment, man. Mm. Uh, what about Shy? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I remember them. Yeah, yeah, they had that one acapella version, which mm-hmm. was dope. Mm-hmm. Uh, Troop, man, Troop. Troop. Didn't they have some kind of? Maybe it was an unsung, or there's some online documentary or something. I, I know I saw something. Yeah, yeah, there was. I I was waiting for it to come out because uh, Al Mack, he in the group, he in the he in the music book group, and um, he was posting stuff on his page, and but I haven't seen it yet. I was okay, waiting for it. But I um I would conversate man. Matter of fact, John John, who's in the group, he gave me his number one day, man. We was uh Oh for real. Okay. Yeah, I hit him up. I hit him up uh through inbox when they had their uh unsung on B T. And I said, Man, I didn't know it was I said, Man, I didn't know it was that deep. He said, uh, hit me up. And I hit <laughs> him up, man. We kicked it about it. You should have him on your show, man. Yeah, yeah. I, but that was a while back. I'll see if I can still reach out to him. Uh, but I uh, see. What about Mr. Wine and Keith Sweat, man? See, I, I was not a fan of Keith. I had nothing. I just didn't really listen to it except for a couple of hits. But I, you know, I recognize how, how dope he is now. Like, yeah, man. He's, and he's still out there doing his thing. Yeah. Which is incredible. Yes. Yeah. I saw him. Uh, he was with Silk and Troop. Okay. Yeah, it was a good concert. Yeah, man. Uh, um, Escape. What about Escape? I was never. I was never really a fan. Really? Of Escape. Really? I just. I couldn't get into him. But again, I always salute Jermaine Dupri. Uh, what's the one ch- young young lady? Candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she, Candy Burst. Yeah, she fine as hell. I'm, <laughs> I'll give him that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, I just wasn't into it. Uh, what about Mike's group, Brownstone? Wasn't into them either. Not man, taking nothing, Mike, not taking nothing away from them, but I just never really listened to them. <laughs> <laughs> what about Invo? Was you into them? Did you get into them? The the hits, absolutely. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, what's the name? Mick Elroy? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mick yeah Foster. They, Foster. I mean, they, yeah, they, for a minute there, they was doing their thing. They brought in, they brought us Tony Tony. Yeah. You know, Invo. Of course, uh, it's a slept-on album, but it's a to me, it's a black people's classic album. It's the Timex Social Club, Rumors. Mm-hmm. That album was yeah. banging, man. Yeah. Lean On Me. Uh, what was... Uh, God, 
why you treat me so bad? Why you treat me so bad? You know, this spawn five on it and all this stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, man, that, that was, I used to wear that out. Timex Social Club. <laughs> what about what about music? Soul Child. I I loved some songs on the first album. Okay. Absolutely. His first song, that was my joint. Yeah. To me, he was from the school of D'Angelo. Yeah. But I mean I loved it. I loved that whole that whole era right there. That's I was like R and B was just like ah uh, came back for a minute super strong. What about solo babyface? I like some of his stuff. Absolutely. Okay. I actually like probably more the the Mary Mac and all that, like the early babyface. Oh man. When he was kind of more into this out. Prince type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but babyface is dope. Yeah. Yeah. I, my favorite babyface song is probably Baby 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 TLC. Oh okay, yeah. mine would be uh, "I Love You, Babe" off that off that first album. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. TLC is incredible. Um, some of my picks would be like Rashawn Patterson. I don't know if you ever peeped some of his stuff. Yep, yep. I, I, matter of fact, I checked him out at the U.S. He had posted a video, so okay. I went deep into his catalog. So yeah, good looking out on that, man. Yeah, that brother, man. He is phenomenal. He's was behind some of Tevin's stuff, Brandy stuff, a lot of people's shit, plus his own stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you already mentioned Tony, 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 Raphael Sadiq, heavy Raphael Sadiq fan. Um, who else do I love? How about oh. Cisco? <laughs> uh, I never, I mean, I just know the bigger hits, okay. but I think he's super talented. Super talented. Um, uh, this one lady that I really love, Latoya Williams. Mm-hmm. She sang on a lot of Snoop stuff. She sang on a lot of rappers, but her voice, man, is just like, ugh, it's, it's great. You should definitely check that out. What's her name, Latoya? What? I think it's Latoya Williams. She had a song. Her only one song that was big. Uh, that boom, 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 boom. Okay, dun, yeah, dun. I see her now, I see her. Yeah, she, she was under, under Snoop. Yeah. She sings on a lot of rap stuff. But she's had a couple of projects out. They just never blew because they weren't on major labels, but she should have been, man. Like, mm-hmm. I think Snoop kind of dropped the ball on that one. <clears throat> but uh, Shinese Wilson, I'm super fan of the first album. Um, I'll tell you the story I met her. No. Uh yeah, um yeah, my mom my mom dated her uncle. Oh wow. And she was in town just back this when the album was hot. She was in town and her her aunt and her uncle was gonna hook us up. We, I was supposed to go see <laughs> Basic Instinct with her, man. When that really? was on the show. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Ah oh, <laughs> so man, so that fell through, so instead of going to the movie, she invited me and my boy, my boy Eric, up to a hotel room. And so I went mm-hmm. up there. Yeah, yeah, went up in there, man. She, she had a, she was just chill. She had a, she had a sock with a hole in it. She had noxema on her face. She was just Lord. laid back, man. <laughs> and uh, she was digging on my boy though. Oh really? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. He, <laughs> She was, you know, she was throwing it at him, and he was. Uh, I don't know if he was like saying, "What? Well, I'm here because of him, because of me. I don't care about that." You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> but of course, I, you know, had, you know, she was hot, yeah, but uh, he started being sarcastic toward her, and so she just started uh, giving me the attention. But and then, as I think back on it, he he kind of looked like Flex, so I think that's her. That was her her style, her type. Skinny, uh, uh, okay, brown, yeah. So, Shit, yeah, I'd have been like, I like your smile, yeah. <laughs> What's happening? Yeah, and then I talked to her on the phone, uh, maybe about a couple of months after that. Oh, wow. That was it, man. I lost, lost touch with her. Damn, I know, man. My, uh, my oldest daughter named after her, Shawnee's. 
Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Shani sent my other daughter name after Whitney Houston. Whitney. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just think she was the shit, man. I mean, she still is, but yeah, I was like Shani's. Oh uh, man, any other? Uh, things well, we should bring up. Go ahead. Uh, what is your style? And if somebody asks you, what's your style of music? Mm. Would you, how would you describe it? Interesting. That's a good question. What is my style of music? Um, I could just name the groups that I that I would say kind of make up Michael Dean stuff. Of course, I'll put the Prince in there, but I would also put in <clears throat> Tupac. Death Row stuff. Um, D'Angelo. Sly Stone. Um, Sounds like funk to me. Yeah, probably. I like, yeah, I like that funk. I like that slow, that groove. Um, uh, I'm forgetting things now as I'm you know, I, I, Janet. Um, Erica Badu. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just th- those those types of things. I'm probably forgetting some. And then I would say um, uh, there's a place for uh, like John Williams. <laughs> You know, yeah, I remember you told me that. Type, surprised. you know, symphonic, okay. that ill symphonic type stuff, which I think is very soulful. Certain <laughs> certain parts of it, because um, I can hear, I can hear the funk in some of the Star Wars in my like in some wow. of those seventies type yeah. symphony symphonic music. I can hear the funk in those. Like there's a guy named John Barry, mm-hmm. who did. Like there's the Moonraker soundtrack. He's done a lot of movies. I think he did the King Kong soundtrack from the 70s. But there's funky or like very melodic or emotional type music in those albums that I identify with a lot. Um, so yeah, that that's probably my core. I guess R&B, soul, funk, you know, whether that plays out in rap or singing whatever it is but you know that's that's my stuff like i'm a hep- heavy pop you know mm-hmm. pop uh daz corrupt snoop all of that stuff man i i listen to that heavy <laughs> you know yeah so yeah, hopefully that answers the question yeah yeah it did i i i would say my style is I was looking at my playlist. I got a playlist called My Flavor. And mm. as I was looking through the songs, I was like, all these songs like feel good music. So <laughs> I would say mine is feel good. Okay. And heavy influence by Rod Temperton mm. and, and Quincy, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I would say Teddy too. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. that. For me, that would be that off the wall. Oh, yeah. Thriller era that's just like, uh, you know, you can just put the put the needle down on one of them records and off the wall, man, and you just can't help but feel good the way Mike's voice sounded, the way the instruments played, just something that speaks to you just, I think, innately as a human being. I think that's why I, that's why I think Michael Jackson always is going to work. Because you could play it for kids that don't know nothing about it, but there's a certain tone or just vibration or just something that's coming through his voice that mm-hmm. they can identify. I think it's an innocence or honesty or something. Yeah, I hear that. That they can just identify with. Well, I don't care whether it's like the Jackson 5 early stuff all the way to like a song like Bad that like my daughter don't know nothing about Michael Jack didn't know nothing about it but it was immediate she was into that you know yeah, that's amazing how you how yeah. you t- how you reach and touch people man yeah i just you know i think it's 
there's that's what singers and performers are supposed to do <laughs> like the real ones just something like you'll hear it and it's just something that touch you and you, inside of you it's like wow that made me feel good or or you just could not ignore it mm-hmm. you know what i mean it's just like wow I, you don't hear it very often where you hear just the immediate feeling yeah but when you do like it's like undeniable it's like oh wow that that's special hey dean let, let me let me stop up right quick i'll be right back yeah is that okay. cool yeah, yeah. Right. What's your favorite uh i'll give you five albums of all time <laughs> <laughs> Woo. hey man you putting it on me <laughs> uh let's see it gotta be thriller it gotta be purple rain uh uh songs of key of life mm. that started it all that's when i knew i love music um Ooh, how's that three? Yep. Mm, I gotta have "Don't Be Cruel" in there, man. Okay. Wow. And uh, uh, <laughs> dude, uh, oh, oh, I'm gonna put it like this. This is gonna be this this uh saturday night live soundtrack okay yeah Sonic yeah, fever yeah. i mean Sonic night fever soundtrack. yes yep. yes that's me that's me that started it all for me not right. mad at that at all yeah yeah I, I, that album and and for me even the album uh grease soundtrack uh they were things that came out of left field <laughs> Mm-hmm. that but again it goes back to what i was saying they're so dope and so undeniable when you hear it you're like that's just great music it's, uh, those songs are great like don't matter if i was into that genre or not i'm into music you can't, right. can't help but you can't deny that that's dope you know saturday night saturday night uh fever that's and I was young. We were young, you know. We were young when that came out, but I know those songs. <laughs> like yeah. they just you couldn't escape it, and they're they're good, man. Like to me, that song, uh, uh, what's the one? Dun, dun, dun. Ah, I got was it kind one of, of slow the song. Yeah, yeah. How deep is your love? How deep is your love? Like that's just like dope. I mean, like damn, you know. And then, like for me, like I said, Grease, I was a big soundtrack for me as, as well. I know them songs were for. Her. Mm. <laughs> I oh, just okay, watched yeah. a movie recently. I was like, I used to really be into this. <laughs> yeah, like everybody. Does, does it hold up to you? Uh, certain songs still do. Yes, like I have the song Grease itself on a couple of playlists. Like that song mm. is tight to me. <laughs> I, I would listen to it. I was like, I can hear how this would influence Prince. Like, I just can Oh, hear really? It. Yeah, to me, I was like, it's no. It's a word, it's a word that you heard. It's gonna move it. Yeah, man. It's just nasty. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> you had um, the Tavares on that album. Um, if I, uh, Yvonne El- Element, uh, If I Can't Have You. 
Mm. Light Fever, How Deep Is Your Love, More Than a Woman, man. More Than a Woman. Yeah, that was cold. And then you had the funky uh, Open Sesame, Cool in the Game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, oh, man. Yeah, that's one of the greatest soundtracks ever. Yeah. That, that was, a matter of fact, that was the first episode. And I don't know if you listened to it, but the, the, the conversation was, I was, I wish that Prince would have incorporated the time songs oh, on, and onto the, the proper rain. And I think, yeah. I, I just, uh, and he and my partner was like, no, nah, it should be separate. I said, well, yeah, we, we've we been listening to it all this time that way. But I said, all those songs were in the movie, man. Why not just right. put it on one spot? And well, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that would have been. I think he missed the, I think he missed the opportunity. I think, because I looked at that uh, list and I had forgotten how big uh, the Bodyguard soundtrack was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it blew the other ones out of the water, man. You know, going back to that Purple Rain that you just said, just said that they could have probably, as much material as Prince actually really had, mm-hmm. they probably could have had, could have just kept Prince's album Purple Rain the way it was. I right. bet you they could have still had a whole like official soundtrack to the movie where it was some songs from Prince, The Time, Apollonia 6, and whoever else could have, like that album still could have been a banger. Oh, you know what I mean? Man. Like you could have had Modern Air would have been on there. Modern that would have Air. been that. Mm-hmm. What other little songs that they could have had? I'm sure they, they had a whole bunch of songs that never came out. I'm sure there's a lot of. They still could have had another best-selling album. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, yeah, that was my take on it. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, man. You know, uh, to going back to that Saturday Night. Fever, it, it makes me remember, and I've been listening to them recently, uh, like Hall and Oates. I saw them oh. in concert. Really? See, I would love to see. Actually, Daryl Hall, he just played here like a couple weeks ago. I was in Vegas at the time, but mm-hmm. he just did a solo thing. But those cats, man, back then, you had some white cats, man, that was killing. Like, they could do all types of stuff. And they... We didn't. I didn't even know who they were. Like you just listened. We heard the music first. Yeah. And we're just. Oh, that's the cut. Like. Oh, oh they white. I didn't know. Oh, okay. Because before you didn't have really videos back then. You didn't know what they looked like. It was just if it was banging, and we we got with it. We playing. It. You know. To me, that's how Madonna first got on. Like we didn't know. I, yeah, I didn't holiday, know. Man. Yeah, back then I didn't know she was white. I was like, oh, who is this? This the cut. I was like, oh, I, oh I, white chick? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Hall and Oates were white because we had the album. And oh, okay. When you come yeah. in our crib, that silver album, and Daryl Hall looked like a woman on there. I remember thinking, <laughs> I thought it was a woman and a dude with a mustache. Right. But, yeah, uh, they was on... They was early playing on some stuff I didn't understand back yeah. then. Now looking at it now, my man's mustache, and I, now I get the <laughs> what that meant. But <laughs> the same way I say about some of cameo stuff, I didn't understand some of that stuff. Now I look back at that and be like, mm. <laughs> okay, all right, Larry. <laughs> but anyway, man, go ahead. Man. Yeah, because Sarah smiles. Huge, yeah, that was huge. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we had that album and. It was yeah, so I I knew who they were. Uh, thanks for my mom. Like I told you, man, I was into Elvis, man, and I I yeah. I don't I don't flex that around people because I get I had to talk about it and like I don't like arguing or just like I just be wanting to just share stuff and and then but people gotta quote Public Enemy anytime I post <laughs> anytime oh, right. I post it they gotta quote that and you know and think about that dude. He, um, you hear stories on both sides because I don't know if you knew his mom picked cotton. I heard little bits of things. It was a time where I was kind of into him. Oh, um, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. okay. You, you could not be. I mean, he was, that is, Elf is a very influential uh, dude to the game. You can't, uh, can't deny that. You know, you know, people say culture vulture, but I will say this, though Jackie Wilson. Said, yeah, he might have he might have stole the musical style, but he's like, he said the brothers was taking my man's dance style. He said that's he said that's what mm-hmm. I got my style from Elvis. Jackie Wilson said that. Yeah, that was deep. Well, you know they got that new movie coming out on Elvis. Oh, on, on Elvis? Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the trailers. It looks good. 
Like I, yeah. I really want to see it. And you can see from the movie. Actually, I saw a review of this already. It's not out, but they they make pains to show you how Elvis was influenced by black artists and performers in the church. And mm-hmm. you, you can see that in the trailer. Oh, okay. Uh, so as long as some people might be mad about this movie, but they're just saying this movie actually goes out of its way to show you that he wasn't a culture vulture per se. He I directly influenced and acknowledges them. And like there's a oh, thing in the trailer man. where uh, it comes up about race stuff or something. In the trailer, you can see Dr. Martin Luther King passes and the manager of says something to Elvis like, Oh, that ain't none of your concern. He's like Elvis like, No, you don't understand. That's my people. That we wouldn't really be here without that. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna take a time to, to acknowledge that or something like so I was like, Yeah, I gotta see this movie. Yeah, he was he was you know, as his mom picking cotton, he was with, with the little homies, man, running around right. kicking it with them. And then I guess the it was a I don't know if you know that they had a it was a clothing store in town that a lot of musicians would go to, like the jazz musicians, and they said he would just sit outside the window and just stare at the clothes. Mm. And then when he was able to get the loot and buy his own clothes, he went in there and just constantly frequent that spot. And, you know, he just – and he was also a trendsetter because he would wear pinks and blacks, and Mm. he would wear a polka dot with stripes. And they said he just Mm. didn't care, but he had his own style. He always stood out. Yeah, absolutely, man. He was an influence, man, for sure. When we were younger, at least I remember when I was younger, he was a he was you still saw the influence very in the mainstream, like it was still very much Elvis was dominant. Mm-hmm. You know, you, I, I don't know if you see that as much today, but I know when I was young, that was, I I remember like it was always anytime his name would come up, there would be a certain reverence for it. Sometimes people kind of clowned it, mm-hmm. but it was always a thing of respect. Like, oh, that's Elvis. Right. You, oh, he's an Elvis impersonator, or, or you know, or something, or Graceland. You would hear about it, and it made me want to go back and look. And and, and at the time, you would still come across his movie sometimes on TV. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, he had a movie. Let me watch this. You know, uh, Jailhouse Rock. What is this? You know. Yeah. So yeah, he was big, man. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know if it, that's why I'm interesting to see how people would respond to it today. Um, Because there's been a lot. I I would imagine, let's say this, the way I saw Elvis back then, and he was dead at that point, but he was such an icon. I wonder if now in our time, do the young ones see Michael and Prince like that? Like, oh, that's something that was before my time. The older people are always talking about it (laughs) and they have a lot of respect for it, but it's not of my time, but I kind of know what it is. I yeah. may or may not get into it, but I know I've heard some of the songs before, you know. Um, and then, there, you know, and like for me, there was a moment when I kind of really got into Elvis for a little bit and, and, oh, okay. and hearing how you like are into it. I, that's kind of kind of feel like some of the younger people are going to come around to Mike and Prince like that. And I hope that all the stuff that we do with the podcast and stuff, at some point, they'll be like, oh, let me. Oh, they got some podcasts about this dude. Let me. Let me check this out. Right. And then they'd be like, whoa. <laughs> and then they had their head buster moments where they're like, this dude was filthy. Like, he was dropping albums like that. He didn't give a damn. And he's mm-hmm. doing all this crazy stuff. Like, wow, okay. <laughs> you know? When it'll put everything that they see now in perspective. Like, I get it. That's how I feel about, like, Sly Stone. I don't yeah. know how much you're into but when you go back and read about all his antics and stuff, Man. I'm like, oh, this Kanye's and all this ain't nothing. <laughs> he was doing all that back then. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was wild with it. He wasn't even showing up for the gigs. He didn't give a <laughs> damn. <laughs> you, you know, arena's filled <laughs> and he in another city. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, Sly, man. Yeah, Sly was wild, man, but he was... Yeah, he was dope though. I mean, the music, but he went through his trials and tribulations, and ultimately, you know, it got the better of him. I guess. Yeah, you yeah. He, he's just, he's he's living in the in his in the van, right? I don't know if he's still like that today, but I mean, yeah, it was. I know he was so period, he was a period of obscurity. Like I think mean, he wanted to be like that 
to some degree. And remember when he came back for a second? He was was on the Grammys or something. Remember that? Yeah, the one he had the mohawk. Mohawk, yeah. Oh, he looked aquatic, man. I remember thinking like his. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's interesting, like, but he was still alive. Yeah. And yeah. even though he was such the peak of everything at one point and then just went into obscurity for many decades to come back like that, and even if it was like, whoa, what is this? I wish the the, the shame for us is we won't be able to do that with Mike and Prince though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like 30 years, 20 years from now, they can only do it as a somebody doing a tribute or, you know, a damn hologram. But the actual guys, they ain't coming back. Like, they, they ain't here. <laughs> it's mm. just, which is sad, man. It's just like, man, they were, they were the dudes. They were the Arab. They were the chosen ones, you know, coming after Stevie and all of that stuff and those greats, Marvin and Elvis and all, you know jimmy and all that yeah they were the they were the ones that took all of that in and said this is the next blueprint and they did their thing but the lessons that i guess the next ones can learn from those cats is as dope as they were they still were not bigger than you know taking care of yourself or not bigger than Mm-hmm. listening to something <laughs> you know what I mean like and, and you can get spiritual or whatever but you you gonna have to you still have to have the other part really in tune not just like talk it and present that you got it together but you gotta really live it to be you gotta be you know and if you're if you're that far where you can't listen to nobody that's what happens to you yeah you know which is sad I just hope the soul of, hope the soul of the music comes back. Um, to me, the music today, I hate sound like so old. Get off my porch, <laughs> pull up your pants. But um, it sounds soulless, man. It's just, and, and my connection with music is spiritual. Mm-hmm. A, a lot of stuff. I, I mean, music touched me, and I can I could be anywhere. It could be any genre, but it hit my spirit. I'm moving, and I and sometimes I can move without even realizing I'm moving. Mm. And and I realized with this music today, it doesn't do that to me. It don't some of it does. It, you know, the ones that I like, like Bruno. But there's a lot of music that don't touch my soul. And it, to me, everything seemed artificial. Even like a lot of the drugs that those uh, artists did back in the day helped them. Mm. You know, psychedelic, psychedelic, and all that. It would mm. influence their music, but it still was touching their soul. Uh, but now with the drugs that they use nowadays, it's like they disconnected to the music. It's no connection. It's just soulless. And then that part of it, and also everything is computerized. So it's like nothing's really hitting your gut, nothing touching your heart. It just, it just, it is what it is. To me, it's like just going through, uh, going through the motions and also just looking for fame, but not just hmm. the love of the music. That's what I get. Um, a lot of the, today's artists. See, I'm going to disagree with you and okay. agree with you, but I, I'm okay. going to say this in disagreement is that I think that the music is touching the soul. I think the music is still very spiritual, but mm. I feel that it's on a dark thing. Absolutely. It's okay. touching people, but in a dark way. Absolutely. I think that it's very hypnotic just as hypnotic as it's always been, it's a different vibration. It's a different rhythm mm. than what we had. Uh, you know, to me, I hear, to me, it all starts to sound the same because I can just hear, it all has that kind of a flow to it. But I can see how that music, for some people, is very tribal and hypnotic and i think that the message that is pushing is a very dark message yeah you're right but i think music is still very powerful it's just being used for in my opinion all the wrong ways and i think it's also a sad to say it is uh, a reflection 
of where we're at you have society for sure. in society and it's a sad thing and I, I hope that there's a certain point there's almost like a renaissance where we've it's gone in such a dark direction that the the new hype thing would be to go in the light <laughs> you know what i mean like a, after so much dread and killing and all of that stuff some, they just get started to get tired of it mm -hmm. and be like it's gonna be the guy who's comes out with the record that's going the different direction will be the new thing because it's not like anything else and hopefully and at some point society is going to want that because it's it got so dark that they're tired of that i don't sadly i don't think it has gotten to that point yet no but i think the music is just a reflection and also influencing the culture to go in this direction and you know, how you get out of that, I don't know, but uh, I do think the music is still just as powerful. It's just not for oh, us. Music. It doesn't hit us because that's not what we are, uh, we don't gravitate toward that. We weren't raised on that type of aggression. Mm -hmm. I think in the music and the, what's missing from the music is the love. Yeah, you know what I mean, and that's what the we song. grew up on. We grew up on love, and you, no matter what was going on, you always have a you have that song about love and we we actually felt you know what i mean like we that was us but now i think it's just all about the aggression there is no love really we we hate i don't know we hate but we're at odds with each other we're at odds at the world we feel like and some of this music is a reflection of you know i i would say some of the gangster rap stuff that i used to listen to back in the day it has run amok yeah you know uh it, it it i can see the influences that the tupacs and the easy e's and all of that the ice cubes i see today the babies of all of their music yeah you know and it was and their music was left to be unchecked <laughs> so without any guidance <laughs> if you just have a generation raised on that without the guidance it's everything you hear today. Mm. Remember those things that we listened to? Because I remember the Columbia House, you know, he's getting the, the, ten, the mm -hmm. 10 for a penny or all that. Or, or, and uh, I would have, I would order like Kenny G, Michael Franks, right. uh, Najee, along with when I, whatever was hot, Michael and Prince and New Edition. But it had all that, that grown stuff, all that, the, like you said, love. And then the instrumentation, it's, ah, oh man, I just, you know, I, I'm glad that I raised my kids away because they always brag about it. And they always come like, yeah, I was with people my age and they didn't, they wasn't aware, they wasn't up on this. And I put them up on this. And like I said, man, it's, it's what we, uh, what we expose our kids to. And I try to expose them to everything, mm -hmm. everything. And, um, they appreciate it. They like my oldest daughter. She said when she hear disco in the seventies, it remind her of me. And uh, and then my youngest, my youngest, she's a rockhead. So I got that. She got that aspect. There's a version of um, "Careless Whisper," you mm -hmm. know, by Wham. There's a, a rock version by Seether. And I would I played that more than I played the Wham version. So wow. my daughter, yeah, when she found out that wham version was first she didn't like it because she was so used to mm. the see the version mm -hmm. so yeah and then my middle daughter she's a neo soul head erica badu okay you know that's that's her style erica badu and she kendrick lamar that's all, you know, that's all right mm -hmm. yeah man yeah yeah you know uh hopefully and and i think too i think tank said this on a recent episode of the drink trap drink champs yeah. i don't know if mm -hmm. you ever watched that but he was talking about like uh he said that uh the dangerous type of music for the labels to push would be our songs about love and yeah, he's like that. that don't that's not what so that's why they don't push the, <laughs> they don't want that to be the dominant thing of us sort of loving on each other and, and uniting they would rather it be that 
very aggressive, you know, mm-hmm. uh, hardcore hip hop rap uh, in terms of the gangster stuff and the drill and all that. That is, they're more comfortable seeing you in that light. And that's deep. And, and that's why that is pushed like that and why they, yeah, that's why they wouldn't have Tank or some of these other R&B artists be the face of R&B no more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not that they don't make the music, but they're more comfortable probably seeing somebody else sing those types of songs than it be a black man. Yeah. Unfortunately, because they they probably like, man, that would be so powerful to those people. And and it's and we can't deny the attraction of that. We've seen it in the past. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I'm not gonna have it's not gonna be the dominant black R and B guy no more. It's not gonna be that group. Not that they don't exist, but we're not pushing that. Unless you wanna come out singing about, you know, some other stuff. But and and I kinda think he's right on that. Like I can kinda see like because a lot of these songs you hear from certain artists are great. Like, you know, you're like, man, how come they're not blowing up? And, and, you know, that's one thing I'll say about Bruno. He's super talented and he writes great songs. But I also do think some of his success is because of that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But it's not necessarily his fault, but it's just the reality of the world. You know, Eminem used to speak on that when he was coming out like, hey, they got me in this position. Yeah, I'm one of the best rappers ever, but I'm, I can tell you that because I'm white, <laughs> I'm going to get right. the superstar. I'm going to get this a certain push that they ain't going to give to such and such rapper that's probably better than me. It is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think when we when we look at the music and we're disappointed that certain things are missing, I think it's up to us to, to okay, well, let's stop giving them the power to decide what we want to listen to. You know, let's go out and we'll make whoever those guys out there straight so they don't need to have, they don't need to be worried about being in the mainstream. That's why I really appreciate um, uh, Lat- Lat- uh, Latacy, if I'm saying her name yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Groups, artists like her, they they gonna be torn and they putting out albums and they still they doing the music that we talking about. Yep. The mainstream ain't pu- pumping it, but we are supporting it, mm-hmm. and that's why it's, that's why I say that music is out there. It, it, of course, it's out there, but yeah, if you waiting for the labels and the game to push it, it, it ain't gonna happen. Yeah, because that's because of what we talk about. I, I don't have a. I love for the newer, you know, the award shows. I think I stopped watching the award shows, man, back in the early 200s, 2000s, I say 200s, 2000s. Uh, but, yeah, I was looking at the list of the two, 2022 Billboard Awards, man. You got, like, uh, Doji Cat. And I like some of her stuff, but it's so raunchy. But she was R&B album and R&B right. female, man. Yeah, that's Come crazy. on, man. <laughs> but that's Kanye, what they want. <laughs> what about Kanye when... One for best Christian gospel album, and he got <laughs> gospel song Hurricane. <laughs> yeah. Wow, <laughs> Drake and you know, you know Drake will do his thing, uh, and then um, the weekend. I can never. I liked his first album, but I can never get into it. I'm not hating on it. It just ain't for me. I don't. I don't know why. What y'all? I'm not saying you, but all this comparison to Michael and stuff. I just. No, I don't get male. it. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> R and B male. I was like, man, the the pickings are slim. But like you said, they're gonna like tank. Like tank said, they're gonna push certain stuff. Um, but yeah, for people like us and our podcast, you know, we direct the people to the right direction. Because I'm always in a group. We always putting people up on new stuff. If I see some, hear something new, it's dope. Put it in there. Say say a little few good words about it mm-hmm. check it out you gotta constantly keep doing that man yeah yeah man we have to con- we have to control our own narratives man that's why I, you know I am the way I am when he was oh yeah the Grammy this or some, uh, you know, somebody in Instagram or somebody sent me a message how come Prince isn't in the songwriters hall of fame I, I have no idea I don't and I question why you would care like 
Yeah. What is that? That organization don't mean nothing to me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I don't care what, in their opinion of it, is even less. So why would I, I don't know why it even matters. Like, do you think he's dope? Then there you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. If he tells you out of his mouth, I don't care for awards anyway. So we didn't need Prince to be validated by none of these organizations. We bought his records because he was dope. Yeah. You know? But it was getting, it was annoying to see him See, you know, that's why I turned off, got turned off by those award shows, seeing people like him who you feel deserve the award and, and right. get passed by by a lesser talented person. Like, come on. Yeah. And that's why you made the right to sit, turn them off. Because yeah. why that us, that let us know these shows ain't for us. <laughs> right. They don't they not really feeling the music the way we do. This is something. This is about something else. So I don't even care nothing about it. So. Let the artist, if the artist feel like he cheated, that's on him. But me personally, if the music is dope, I'm going to get it. If such and such guy at some organization doesn't like it, why would I care what he thinks? He don't make nothing dope on the streets. <laughs> he don't guide, right. they don't guide the culture. <laughs> at least not to me, they don't. So I didn't care then. I don't, I don't care now. <laughs> Yeah, they don't need no validation from those groups. Mm-mm. And I question why we need to have, why we need to, why do we need them to validate the stuff that we like? They they want to follow us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they only doing it because it's a show to make money. <laughs> That's the only reason. <laughs> so that'll tell you right there, they got nothing to do with the music. That's why all these award shows nowadays, I can't watch them because... I'm not, I don't know nothing about the artist they pushing and it ain't made for me. Like this is made for something else. I'm okay with that. I don't need yeah. to watch it. <laughs> and then the car, the red carpets and just so like, there's too much set on shock value. It's like, man, look yeah. what he had on, look what she had on. And it's, uh, yeah, I'm just turned off by all of it. Yeah. And like I said, that, that stuff is cool. If you're into it, more power to you. I'm just, I didn't get into it for a fashion show, so for me, it doesn't. I right. I, I listen to it. <laughs> I listen yeah. to the music. <laughs> it's hard, you know. So what they got on, or how, you know, who's who got the biggest booty or whatever. I mean, I, I like that, but yeah. that ain't why I'm listening to the music. <laughs> so I can watch that somewhere else. <laughs> but that's what the game has gotten to. I mean, that's hey, that's what it is. That's fine. I don't need to be a part of that like you know so all of the young ladies got bad bodies i salute but i'm buying music i'm listening to music i'm not watching porn so yeah i can't yeah. really it don't really work for me how you feel about doji cat honestly i don't know much about i mean i see the name online a lot but i don't think i've oh. really heard her music i just know of her face and you know, I see the antics, but I don't. I've never listened to the music. It ain't come across. I ain't added it to my, my playlist. So, what about say so? I ain't never heard of that. Uh, yeah, get it when you get off this. When you get a chance, uh, check her out. Say so. I, I think that's the only say that, so. Okay. Yeah, I think that's her most R and B sounding song. It's the most catchy and it's the most radio friendly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I did. Um. I did a TikTok to that video. Uh, to that oh, song, really? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe I heard it and just don't know what it's called or yeah, something. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them have some good songs. Mm-hmm. I've 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 got on to stuff late. A lot of the new stuff I'll get onto it late, but I'll be like, okay, I see why people. Is what was the one chick? Uh, is it Ella May? Yeah. Yeah. What's the song she had? It's probably old now, but. Was that Boo? Boo? Maybe it was the Boo song. I said, I just heard that probably a few months ago for the first time, like really listened to it, watched the video. I was like, oh, okay, I see why I kept seeing her name on social media. Like, yeah, this is dope. Like, I would rock to this. This yeah, is kind yeah. of my style right here. Yeah, booed up. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay. It's like, this could have came out, you know, in the 90s or something. I would have been playing this. Yeah, yeah. So they have a few little cuts. You know, they do have some cuts out there. I just... You know, I, I, I'm not into a lot of the the visuals. Is too, I, not that I don't like the video, but I'm just saying, like, 
the music in my mind, I think the music be so trash. I don't even want to like give it my attention like that. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you gotta be careful what you let come into your mind. You know, you, and I try yeah. to tell my kids like, listen, you listening to this stuff prolong, man, and start to seep into your subconscious, and you start like accepting some of this foolery they're talking about in your life. Yeah, music is powerful, man. Yeah. It's powerful and heavy influential. Mm -hmm. Heavy. Well, all right, Mr. Sean, sir. I think sir. we've extinguished things. Now, where can people find your podcast? Uh, my podcast is on Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify so far. And Buzzsprout, that's my host. Okay. So, yeah, you can find it there. Yep. And what's the complete name or the name? Should you just look up Music Book? The, yeah, the Music Book Podcast. And you spell that a little different. Yeah, with a Z. Okay. Yep. Yep. Let them know. Yep. All right. Well, cool, man. Thank you for coming on again. I appreciate and, uh, we'll it. We'll definitely chop Kick this. Kick it, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. And we'll we chop this up another time. Ladies and gentlemen, you already know. Work it like a job. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.